What's going on, guys? And welcome. This is part two of episode number 45 of RizzoCast, where we break down a preview for 2021 Giants spring training, Giants season. Going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the first episode with Taylor Worth and Brooks Knudsen. And we are back answering your questions that you submitted to us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Tune in, guys. Here's part two. Hopefully you enjoy. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at RizzoCast for more. And uh, enjoy part two. Roger. So, I mean, I could have just said uh, Justin Rogers and they could have found it. No. But he wants to know, do you guys think Jalen Davis will get a longer look this season if he makes the opening day roster? Only 12 at-bats in last year's shortened season. So I'll start this off. Uh, I would say it's very hard for him to find a path. I know he had a few holes in his swings. A guy who hit 30 home runs, you know, at the at the AAA level not too long ago. Yeah, we did forget about him. He made the opening day roster, but, you know, with some of the right-handed hitting outfielders like Ruff and Slater, you'd have to get through them first. Brooks, what do you think about Jalen Davis? Um, yeah, Jalen Davis is a guy that I'm excited about. I am. Um, I know Farhan, everybody is. They, the reason why he didn't play much last year is, um, you know, they're, they were pretty healthy in the outfield, right? I mean, they didn't, you know, Yaz, uh, you know, he missed like a little bit of time. And at that point it was, uh, you know, didn't really need to worry about it because they had so many guys to use, uh, Dickerson and Ruff and Dubon and, you know, he keeps going. Um, so anyways, Jalen, he obviously has a strikeout problem. I know he's working on it because um, contact and all that stuff is, has been tough for him. Uh, he hasn't really had a lot of reps. You know, I can't, I hate when they're like, Oh, you know, he struggled. It's like he barely played any major league at bats, you know, I, in his 30 at bats, he didn't play great, you know? So, so I'd like to see him. Um, he, he, he's a guy who missed out on the minors last year. I know he went to the alternate site and kept, you know, trying to stay, uh, physically fit and all that stuff but it's not the same so he needs to go start the year in triple a i think i just don't see him making the opening day roster um even if he hits 14 bombs in spring training i think they're still wanting him to start at sack get hot get ready to come up and then uh yeah maybe some of these trades might happen slater oh it's like oh, okay well come on up right come on up you know Jalen. let's go so yeah i'm hoping he's not the next you know mac williamson of some sort who it's kind of just a four A player. He tries to sue the team, right? Yeah. Taylor. Um I I I think um I can say positively yes, because they uh Gabe Kapler and I think even Farhan came out and said that um they did not give him enough at bats last year. They they realized that was a mistake and this year they will do that. Um how they do that, I think I think there are some paths in the outfield for playing time for him. I, I look at the outfield and I think of Mike Ustremski, Mauricio Dubon, Alex Dickerson are the three who are safe in my opinion. And that leaves Darren Ruff, maybe Austin Slater, Steven Duggar is probably the most fringe player on in that outfield. So I think there's three guys that Jalen Davis could easily overtake or somewhat easily. Um, and He's, you know, he's a big power hitting prospect. The team this year, I don't anticipate them having the same success with the long ball. So I, I think their hand will be forced at some point. And if it is, uh, they need to do right by him and not give him, I don't know, 13 or however many at bats it was, something, a cup of coffee with the major league team, basically. An espresso um, shot. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think they've they've come out and said that, but I think if they do, um, they're going to need to be patient with it. Yeah, had an opposite field home run opening day or the next day at Dodger Stadium. the walk-off, Stadium. too, in 19, right? Yeah. yeah. First big league home run was a walk-off mm-hmm. home run. So, yeah, maybe there is a path, as Taylor mentioned. Um, here's a question here from Darthy Soga, Darcy Soga, um, who, <laughs> Soga. Asked a few, who asked a few questions. Um, first one, <laughs> Soga, yeah. Uh, first one here is, how do we feel about Duggar? And this kind of goes into the Jalen Davis um, discussion. I mean, we uh, Taylor briefly mentioned Duggar there. I, do, I, I don't see it. I, he's a great outfielder. He's a great base runner. But there's so many guys in the league that are like that, and they don't come at a premium. If he hits, he's on the roster. That's the bottom line. But being a left-handed hitter, 
is one thing, but you got to have the splits to go along with it. And if he's not hitting both left-handers and right-handers, I just don't see, I just don't see him being included on the roster at all. He's had injury history with the shoulder problem, the same right shoulder. I think it is that he's been dealing with. I'm not too, too high on Steven Doug or Brooks. Uh, I'll just say, you know, he survived a couple of DFA um, rounds for the Giants. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trevor got recently uh, before that uh, Basabe. And uh, the reason why Basabe cleared and got outrighted is because he was out of options. So Duggar does have, I think, three options remaining. So I think if they are going to DFA Duggar at some point, uh, I think some team will definitely take a shot at him because he plays a kind of tough to find position at center, you know? Um, and so, I, so far the Giants have kept him around because even with everything, uh, your center fielders are Dubon, uh, you throw Yaz out there, but I think they prefer Yaz and right. And then, um, then you start going to, uh, you know, putting Slater out there, I think he can handle center. But, I mean, they're keeping Duggar around so far because he plays center field. Yeah. I, and Jalen could play – Jalen Davis could play center also. Right. I think with Duggar, last year was when he made that swing adjustment to kind of – I think he he kind of emulated uh, Cody Bellinger, I think, was who he was trying to uh, adjust his swing to. And I didn't see it translate. Um, I don't think he got – a ton of at bats last year, but the ones he did, it, yeah. he, he didn't look very impressive. And like you said, I think he's just, you know, he offers you speed. He offers you probably some pretty good defense, but I don't know. There's not a ton of upside with him. And I think, like I said earlier, he's probably the most expendable outfielder on that roster. Yeah. Yeah. He's, it's going to be interesting for sure to see what happens with Duggar. Cause I know, he's on the roster for a reason. And, you know, I know he got played appearances last year because belt was hurt. I think uh, Dickerson, well, I don't think Dickerson was out. Oh, belt and Longoria started the season off uh, right. on the DL. So that's yeah. why Duggar, 10 days. Yeah. Dickerson had fake COVID. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, false buzzing, with you know? uh, yeah, reporter broke yeah. a certain story. That was not true. Uh, yeah. We, we know who uh, broke the rules. Yeah. And anyway, um, uh, Darcy asked another question and this is a good one here. And this is one, this is a guy who I forget about all the time. She wants to know, uh, what would everyone's feelings about Tyler Beatty coming back this season, assuming he's healthy and prepared? So we mentioned Beatty uh, beforehand, probably all-star break-ish, maybe before, maybe a little bit after. Yeah, He's on a throwing program from what we've heard. He's a guy who's always been stuff, stuff, stuff. He never has command of the fastball. He gets himself in too many hitters counts. His secondary stuff is good. I think we saw him like throw like eight innings against the Mets last year or in 2019, I think. Um, he, you know, if, if he's a guy who has consistent strike zone command and he could throw some of his secondary pitches, he's got a great slider. First strike, he could be a guy who is maybe a transitional rotation piece from, you know, this kind of restocking period into kind of a new you know, completed pitching staff. Maybe he's that transitional guy. I don't know. Taylor, what do you think, you know, in terms of the outlook on uh, Tyler Beatty? So I, I don't remember exactly because it feels like it's been so long, but the last time we saw him pitch, it wasn't good. Um, so I, I think right now, if you're the Giants, you view Beatty as if he's starting games for you this year and he's, close to average I think you view that as a win anything you can get I think you view as a win um I think the expectation should be pretty low just because there's not a lot of positive tape to go off of but he's still a young guy he's still a very talented pitcher and um he could surprise people but I think the the safe way to go about him is to just don't expect much for now mm -hmm. Brooks yeah I keep it short but you know they brought in guys because even when bd is uh sorry they bought they brought in starting pitchers because even when uh bd is back you know it, you gotta you can't rush it's, tommy john is serious you know and and uh you know uh, cueto he's one of the more recent guys that came back from it um you know just it's 
you kind of learn how to walk again, learn how to pitch again, that whole thing. So it's going to be, you know, he's going to have some growing pains. And if the Giants are really in it, you know, like in it, in it, and he's like coming back, they're going to have to really, uh, you know, could be an extended uh, Sacramento stay before he's up to really game speed. So That's a guy who, if this team's going to compete late in the year, that's a shot in the arm guy. A guy who you don't expect much, who surprises you and does good and propels you closer to contention. Brebia, too. That guy, he's got awesome stuff. The only reason the Giants got him is because he was, you know, recovering from TJ. So he's solid. Yeah, unbelievable slider as part of that uh, Cardinals bullpen for the last Strike few years. Strikeout machine. Strikeout machine. So Darcy uh, has yeah. one more question. So Darcy. Oh, geez, Darcy. So Darcy, <sighs> Darcy was. Monopoly hopping, here. Yeah, she was hopping from Facebook and she's going to end it here on Twitter. Um, she wants to know the most looked forward to game during spring training. So I feel like all of them are crapshoots, uh, to be honest, but I will answer the question and I will say the Bay bridge series, even though it's in Scottsdale this year or the A's training site, you know, I, I still think it's a great, you know, it's, it's still, you know, probably going to be televised the same way it usually is. So I would say that's the game that I always look forward to. Easy uh, answer. Yeah, Easy so, answer. I mean, that's the only one that I could think of that's even on the schedule. I don't even know the schedule. I had to no, pull it up. <laughs> no, the easiest answer is the first, first game, baby. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to lump – we'll lump our answers yeah. into the, for that one right there. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. We, we can't wait, Darcy. We're going to be watching. Yeah, all the irrelevant guys that, you know, there's going to be guys cut, cut from camp that aren't going to make the – that aren't going to be there. So, mm-hmm. we're probably going to see a finished roster by then pretty much. All right. Here's a here's a quick question from yeah. uh, from Charlie Baldwin, mm. our buddy from uh, from Giants Chatter. He did want to know how do you say Berger? It's Berger, right? We got that. Yeah, Berger. Bear uh, Ger, mm-hmm. right? I was just Bear, saying. Call, bears go Ger. Call him Kale Berger. I think we should say <laughs> Kale Berger. Uh, and he also asked, "Who are you all predicting to come out of spring training as the number two starting pitcher behind Kevin Gosman?" <sighs> That's assuming Kevin Gosman is number one. He is. I think sure. he is. Let's just go with that for, sure. for yeah. old Pete's sake. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll just – I'll start by saying um, – oof. Actually, I don't want to go. That's a tough one. I'll go, for, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> I, I think – I couldn't do it. You look at who's in the rotation. I mean, the biggest name in that rotation is Johnny Cueto. So, I think, you know, beloved veteran, um, gets paid a lot of money. Shimmies. Just throw him into number two. I, you know, you, you're not paying him that kind of money to put him, you know, as a third or fourth starter. So, against uh, other teams, number twos, you want Johnny Cueto out there? I mean, and I think he has the most upside. Uh, last year wasn't very good at all. So, but, so Cueto versus Bauer. You, you, no, I mean, <laughs> above everyone else, I think you know it would be more like a a nod to Johnny, just because you know. Yeah, it could be his last year with the Giants, most yeah, likely. Yeah, and he's a big name, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. there's a little bit of ego in there, but I think my money is probably on Johnny Cueto. And, sorry, let me just add real quick, he did make 12 out of 12 starts last year for the Giants. That is, mm-hmm. That's a Jeopardy question in you know, eight years from now. Who <laughs> made the mo- most starts for the Giants in 2020? Johnny Cueto. Yeah, sorry to burst the bubble, though, but Bauer's not starting game two. Bauer's going to start game three, I think. Yeah, if that must were. be nice. To have I, I saw something where three. I saw Bueller pitching third or so. I don't know who who knows. Kershaw I mean, that, still gets it. Either way, it's it's all incredible what the Dodgers are doing. Either way, um, their bullpen's gonna blow it anyways. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Speaking of bullpen, who do we think we got a question here from uh, Chris Corbett? Corbett. I don't want to get his name wrong. Chris Corbett. Come on. How do you screw that up? Corbett. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Corbett, baby. He's so he wants to know what the bullpen's going to look like. Yeah. What do you guys – this is just a – I mean, so much to get into. I'll, I'll kind of mm-hmm. abbreviate that question there because, you know, save us some time here. Who do you see guy? you know, who do you guys see in kind of like late ev- – what am I, I'm screwing up my English here. You're fine. Late leverage roles. Because, I mean, is it Tyler Rogers again, who's overused so much, he's changing his walk-up music to kind of portray that? Who's the guy that, you know, you kind of turn to in big situations? Jake McGee, is he going to close? You even have a closer? What's going on in the bullpen? Uh, sorry, uh, really quickly, I'll go with Alex Wood as my number two guy. 
Uh, uh, there you uh, go. Just, yeah. just for who you know, for whatever. Just mm -hmm. uh, like if he's on, he's on. So we'll go with him. Um, and uh, yeah, bullpen. Um, y yeah, I mean, if we're just talking about like late inning guys, um, yeah, definitely interested in a guy like Whistler. He uh, he's really found his home in the bullpen, uh, and uh, so he's he's on his sixth team and since 2018. Can you believe that? He's just been on all wow. these teams. So a lot of teams didn't want him. A lot of teams wanted him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that guy. I mean, you, you got to think of uh, Harlan Garcia is going to be out there most likely. Uh, Reyes, Maranta, if he's healthy, you know, definitely out there. And then uh, uh, Jake McGee. And then I like Tyler Rogers as a, uh, as a lower leverage guy. I really think Rogers was underappreciated last year. Uh, he did have his moments. Uh, rough outings against the Dodgers and whatnot, but he uh, he to me is a a guy that can definitely help bridge start starters to the late guys. Yeah, I um, in terms of late game, you know the most important innings. I think it's going to be, I think right now Reyes Maranta, if healthy, of course, is kind of leading the pack for the close. Forgot about him. Um, and I think also Jake McGee. You know he's had plenty of experience in those late game roles, so I think him as well and uh, Tyler Rogers. But for the bullpen in general, uh, Gabe Kapler said that it's it's pretty much set except two spots. Um, so I think right mm -hmm. now the guys. This is a little bit kind of off topic, but the guys who I think are guaranteed are Reyes Maranta, Tyler Rogers, Jake McGee, uh, Harlan Garcia, I think, and then probably Wandy Peralta. And then after that, it's kind of a crapshoot, but. You know, I, I think they're pretty much – they have an idea of what they want to do, but they're never going to come out and say it. They have all these guys that have options too, right? I mean, even a Tyler Rogers. I think a lot of people keep getting confused. They're like, oh, I think he's out of options. He's got three options remaining. He just took him forever to get up to the big leagues, and that was on the Giants. They had so many productive years in the minors, and they kept overlooking him. So, so he's got options. So does Selman and Peralta. And uh, once Tropiano gets added to the 40-man roster, they can uh, send him down the sack anytime, just keep going. And Reyes Maranta, you know, he might not start the year. If they're just saying, hey, you know, you're just coming back from injury, go to sack for a month or a couple weeks and get ready. Who knows? But, yeah. yeah. I, I saw a picture or a video of Maranta walking in, and I, I swear to you, I thought it was Pablo Sandoval with the mask on. They, they just look so much alike, same kind of stature, same size. Sandoval, of course, is in Atlanta, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But maranta has got a better game face, though. Yeah. <laughs> Pablo, Pablo's just cheesing it all the time. Maranta's just like, you know, yeah. <laughs> bearing down. Yeah. So but I like uh, Maranta. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maranta's going to be getting a lot of opportunities in high leverage roles. So we're going to skim through a few of these questions here. Say, hey, Doug mentioned Austin Slater. We kind of already talked Say about hey, him. Doug. Um, and uh, we talked about this, uh, the Berger situation with him starting. I guess we could real quick skim through that does he get starts this year i think he does i don't know what oh, yeah. capacity what do you guys think about that yeah I, I think that um you look at the rotation and there's no one guaranteed anything really except maybe kevin gospin so you know stuff's gonna happen we all know that I think yeah, guys that, are uh, gonna get hurt it's gonna happen hopefully it, not too much like what brooks was saying earlier you look in the next year or two and there's really not a whole lot of options so i think you have to at least uh, look at it and see if it's Experiment. a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a few more here. This is from hashtag beat LA. Um, he says he wants to know who is the one non top 10 prospect. Each of you guys are looking forward to seeing the most. That's hard. Cause I honestly, I did not prepare for this question and I'm going to screw this up, but non top 10 prospect that I want to see might have to be, I don't know. I was not, I should have prepared you are, before. You are not ready for this one. Okay. I'm a deer in the headlights right now. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my pick here. Hold on. Yeah, Skimming please through. do. Um, I mean, Sean Jelly. Wait, no, he's is he number ten? Uh, I was looking at organizational 10. rank number thirteen. Damn it! I don't think he's thirteen anymore. I think he's higher. Um, stand by. Uh, we'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, here's, here's Gregory Santos. Boom. Gregory Santos. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, and this is a loaded one, and I want to get into this one. This one's from. Um, our friend Mike Saltzman, who is at Cannon Till, he wants to know, do you see the Solano arbitration, uh, quote, win impacting future negotiations with the team's best players? Giants' previous regime took care of their guys. This group clearly looks for undervalued players. 
Will look, uh, will guys look elsewhere when they become free agents with teams willing to spend? So I'll start off here. First of all, the Solana going to arbitration, that's solely the business of baseball. It's not the first time it's happened. It sure. It's been a while in giants franchise history. Um, but, I mean, I, it's the business of baseball. Arbitration sucks. Every single player will tell you that. Yes, yeah, Solano lost, but, you know, $500,000 is not something to – or maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe they're – you know, it's not as bad as a situation as Chris Bryant in Chicago with the grievance of the service time manipulation. But what I will say is Donovan Solano, is he the, one of this team's best players? Yeah, you could make that argument. But – would he be on like a really, really good team? Probably not. He'd probably just be a complimentary player who, you know, maybe starts at second base and you hide him at the middle of your lineup or at the bottom of your lineup. So I don't think Solano's a guy you would quote unquote take care of like, you know, financially with like a big time deal. Um, and there's no problem, especially at this stage of the rebuild for looking for undervalued players, in my opinion. And when when Mike mentions, will guys look elsewhere when they become free agents with teams willing to spend? Well, one of the teams willing to spend in the future is going to be the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> so they're going to have like a $30 million payroll next year. And they're going to, you know, be not maybe on the San Diego Padres or the Dodgers level, but you still got to build a team. Um, so they're going to spend, you know, they're going to be in on a shortstop. I think one of the prize possessions that are out there. So I don't think this Solana arbitration is impacting negotiations with anybody. Cause I don't see a free agent next year going, Oh, I don't want to sign with you guys. Cause you guys screwed Donovan Solano. That's not how anybody is thinking. So that's my mini rant. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor thoughts. I, I, I agree. I, I think the, the thing with Solano was kind of a weird outlier just because I think personally, I think it spoke volumes to how they view him. I think they view him as, a little bit expendable. I, if he matters that much to you, um, after what he did last year and the year before, you know you're you you should absolutely chalk up the six hundred thousand to to re-sign him. So I, I think that that is kind of a one unique situation that I, I don't think will be a problem moving forward. Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just quickly. Uh... I don't, I really, I think there are people out there that really know how the arbitration uh, process works in baseball. Um, why the Giants felt that that number was not good enough for them. They filed at this. Donovan wanted that. Um, if I could guess, their Giants are just saying, you know, we, we filed this number because, you know, you're like so bad with the glove last year. <laughs> you know, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it was, but um, going forward, uh, I, I think you know, you're starting to see other clubs do that too. Uh, Take or leave it. Well, Jack Flaherty and the Cardinals had to go to arbitration and someone said, Oh, that probably went longer uh, for the future of Jack and the Cardinals not working out because uh, they took him to arbitration, but it's, it's probably just, you know, as much as, yeah, we could settle with him, but, um, you know, we, we are going to stick with our spending model and we feel like, Oh, here's the main point out of all this. It, it really does come down to, um, Taylor's thought about, yeah, you know, and I've been saying this all off season too, you know, Donovan Solano could be that guy that gets traded before opening day. What's easier to trade 3.9 million or 3.2 million. So are you really going to worry about paying a guy that you're not even going to pay anyways? It's not even, I feel bad for Donnie, barrels but I mean uh it's just business and baseball and and everyone knows that the business side of baseball sucks horribly <laughs> yeah 100 percent. so did we come up with prospects or we just because I did not come up with yeah, I got a couple okay go ahead share <laughs> so the first and this is like a personal um type of prospect for me friend of the I show <laughs> no but I, I love power hitting lefties and I think a sleeper he, he wasn't drafted. He was drafted pretty high, but I think Logan Wyatt can convert, not convert, but I think he can pan out as a power hitting lefty option at first. Mm -hmm. um, one, because I don't think they have a whole lot of talent in terms of first base options right now. So I think his path is pretty clear. And then the second guy, someone who was probably the MVP of spring training 2020 before the pandemic 
and that's uh, Sean Roby. A lot of people don't know who he is. I didn't mm-hmm. know who he was until yeah. last year. Um, I, I think he's somebody who is in a pretty wide open third base prospect market and someone who was stellar in spring training last year and someone who I'm looking forward to again this year and someone who could, we could see at the big league level late this year, maybe early next year. Um, he's not a household name by any means, but he's somebody who I got my eye on. He's, he's a deep cut uh, mm-hmm. among Giants uh, fans <laughs> that dig the prospect list. And yep. Sean Roby, glad he brought him up because he is also also one of the many players that need to be added to the 40-man roster this winter to uh, protect him from the Rule 5 draft. Yeah, so, I could see him go. getting picked from the Rule 5 draft if they don't protect him. Yeah, and the mm-hmm. Giants don't have a lot of third base uh, options coming up. You know, Casey Schmidt's a, a – you know, top pick. Uh, Remember Jacob Gonzalez? Yeah, is he a first baseman now, right? He was a <laughs> second round pick too, man. That's that's good. He needs to be added too. His his mm-hmm. time has come to either be added or be picked by uh, Rule 5 or just kind of stay in the minors for the Giants. Um, I think we – I don't even have to mention these guys because we already covered them, but they're outside of the top 10. Will Wilson, I've been looking forward to seeing him. Number 11. Uh, yeah, he's number 11. And <laughs> even Jalen Davis is still considered – uh, in the Giants uh, prospect list, he's number 13. So I've, we did qu- uh, cover those guys. There you go. I like Wyatt a lot. He's, he was regarded as having one of the best college eyes in the draft. So Logan Wyatt, um, the rest of those guys, Sean Roby, will be looking out for you. All right. Roby. So we teased it a little bit at the beginning. We're going to get into it now. 2022 comes along. There might not be some of the familiar faces we're used to seeing at 24 Willie Mays Plaza. Three guys in particular. Let's start with our guy, Brandon Belt, who, of course, came up with the Giants in 2011, was never the player that everybody thought he was supposed to be. Instead, he kind of branded himself, no pun intended, as you know, he kind of made himself into a player that you either hate or you like. And the fan base is very divided. We have a term for this. It's called Belt Wars. Where do we see him fitting in a different uniform next year so i'll start off with with this one i will give you a a team here and it makes so much sense to me yuli guriel in houston (laughs) yuli guriel in houston did not play well last season at all he had a 79 weighted runs created plus that's not good at all a negative fan graphs war that's not good at all and he's a guy who has an option at the end of this year so Brandon Belt is from Texas. It's just come on a, home, baby. <laughs> it's just such a good fit. Brandon Belt home. He had he's had uh, in the past his rookie year. I think maybe I don't know if it was his rookie year. He had like an upper deck home run at, at Minute Maid. Um, so Brandon Belt coming back home. Brooks, I saw the sigh. What, did I take your your landing spot? I probably would have followed the exact same script as you. Um, Mm. So I'm going to pivot because I was going to go with the Astros as well. Um, Not only being a Texas born, uh, not only playing uh, for the Longhorns, but uh, you know, he is probably better fit there. Um, So, you know, just, you know, the American league, uh, you get a lot of these first basemen that are, Half the time, they are your DH, like your Albert Pujols. So they have, you know, not a lot of good defense in the American League at first base, I feel like. I could be wrong, but um, I could definitely see uh, Belt uh, going to the Astros. And then since uh, since I'll, I'll uh, kind of toss a, a different team out there, uh, let's, let's stay in the Lone Star State, baby. Texas Rangers. Brandon Belt, find your new home in, in Texas. I mean, right now they got a – Nate Lowe, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they have any uh, big block there at first. Um, but I will pretty, say – Pretty low. Nate Lowe. Yeah, pretty low on the um, national ranking in terms I'm, of first baseman. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lau Low. I don't even know – you know. And he – yeah, I don't know. Um, I just want to say uh, a lot of people, especially on, like, Giants Chatter, uh, you know, um, a lot of people still, you know, love – Brandon Belt in orange and black, and there's not a lot of, you know, they they have some options uh, for, you know, the Giants in the next couple of years at first, but they don't have, like, a guy that's waiting in the wings. So, yeah, Flores will get reps there. 
so I don't know. I, I just I, I don't I don't personally see uh, Brandon Belt coming back to the Giants. Um, so I'll, I'll go with a team like the Rangers. I I mean, with these three guys, we're going to piss off so many people. Oh, I'm, no. I'm so here for it. But um, I, I think Brandon Belt is the, – the chances of him re-signing with the Giants are probably at zero. Um, I don't think he comes back at all. I, I think – I just get that feeling that he, they don't view him – as part of the future, not even the immediate future. And I think about a team for Brandon Belt, and I'm instantly drawn to the AL East, specifically the Boston Red Sox. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Tampa Bay Rays. Okay. I thought uh, yeah, he was going to say mean, the Yankees. Yeah, that's – I feel like the Yankees no. do have options there, right? You can't like, shave that beard. Oh, true. Oh, that would look um, weird. <laughs> I, I think about the Red Sox, and I think that I can just envision him in a Red Sox uniform, and I don't think they have a guy – who's starting every game right now Mitch Moreland was on the Red Sox. So I think now he's on the A's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's the first team that instantly just pops into my head for Brandon I, Belt. I could see it. And I, I also wanted to add, um, you know, Brandon Belt will still earn money because of uh, he does a lot. He, you know, he's a, a sabermetric uh, darling, you know, he, mm-hmm. he, he'll give you two to three war probably every year. Uh, and the defense alone is enough uh, where if he's not expected to really be a home run guy or really worry about um, carrying an offense, he could just bat seven for you, you know, 350 on base. So, so you know, you could probably see the Giants and Brandon Belt kind of coming to the, the end. Ten seasons. Come on. Ten. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of rare in baseball to spend ten years with a team. So, um, so yeah, I, we all think Brandon Belt will be wearing a different jersey in 2022, but – Damn if he didn't have one of the more interesting careers ever in, in yeah. Giants uniforms. I, I yeah. personally think his career is going to take off when he goes to a new team. I, I think a change of scenery, an AL team in a yeah. ballpark that fits him, I think will he some lucky team will finally get the Brandon Belt breakout year that the Giants yeah. have been waiting for every single year. Just stay healthy. Yeah, and I think the Giants finally – like, he didn't have the counting stats last year because he only played against right-handed pitching. Granted, nobody had the counting stats because it was only a 60-game year. But, Except for God, he, yeah, he really thrived against right-handed pitching, and it would be interesting to see how teams play him. But I do think a multi-year deal would not be shocking uh, for Brandon Belt. All right, we got him out of the way. Let's go with the, uh, the kid um, from the East Bay, Brandon Crawford. And this one, for a lot of people – Uh, kind of in his circle hurts to maybe see him move on. But again, a guy, we remember him in Milwaukee, uh, like the weekend that after Buster Posey's injury, Brandon Crawford comes up and hits a, you know, grand slam for his first big league hit in his first big league game. Sean Markham. Sean Markham, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, of course, three (laughs) gold gloves later, two championships later, here he is as, you know, kind of a below average bat now, still very good defensively. Where do you guys kind of see him fitting? Because I know this is a really, really interesting one because there's so many good shortstops out there next offseason with Correa, Story, Seager, the list goes, Didi Gregorius, I think, as well as back on the market. Uh, where do you guys kind of see Crawford heading? Go ahead, Brooks. Yeah, yeah um, and I, I kind of picked this question because I did see an article out today um, about – you know, Crawford saying, you know, you'd like to spend, you know, you'd like to continue being a giant. And, you know, I get, you know, I think a lot of players will say that, but I actually believe him because we know his history. He's been East Bay and a a guy and a Giants fan his whole life. So why would he not want to stay? And especially because the Giants have exciting seasons coming up, you know, if you want to be around for that. Um, Besides Will Wilson, you know, there's not, a crazy amount of shortstops in the giant system knocking them on the door, but you do have a ton of shortstop free agents next year and the giants have a ton of money. So you got to think that they're, they're probably going to spend uh, on one of those guys. And I'd like to say, I think half of those shortstops will go back to their old team. Like a Corey Seager will probably go back to the Dodgers. Who knows? Um, so you got Brandon Crawford. I uh, think if the Giants wanted coverage at shortstop next year, I think they'll just go with Dubon or in-house or a one-year guy. Um, and I don't think Crawford's that guy. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be wearing a Giants uniform next year. I see him going to Disneyland on the weekends, playing for the LA Angels. Hmm. Uh, sorry, not weekends, Thursdays. Thursdays and Mondays. <laughs> 
Thursdays and Mondays, Crawford and his four kids will be going to Disneyland, California Adventure, and he'll be playing later that night at Angel Stadium with Mike Trout. Um, you know, solid offense over there. They really are strong right-handed batting offense. Uh, everybody with Rendon and Upton and Trout. And uh, I think outside of Otani, they really don't have any proven lefty hitters over there. So, uh, and Angel Stadium is a band box. Uh, Crawford, you know, you're not going there to try to chase another ring. I don't think so much. I think he's just going there to go play ball. He's an LA guy because he went to school in UCLA. Um, I just totally think in my mind, I'm like, I could totally see him playing shortstop for the Angels. It just seems like uh, somebody that is going to be sticking in the, you know, in California, you know, he's got his family and stuff. So uh, I see Crawford on the Angels. Uh, this is, the, Farhan's idea was brought in to do the dirty work that the previous um, regime could, right, could, would not do. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, they're going to have to rip off some band-aids and I think Crawford's going to be one of those band-aids and it, it probably won't feel good um, for him and probably the giants and obviously the fans. But I, I, I think if you're looking towards the future, you look at the prospects at short and obviously Marco Luciano's, you know, short third, wherever they decide on him. But I think Will Wilson's probably the most immediate um, unless I'm missing out on somebody, but I think they would probably just go if they don't sign a big name in free agency, probably, you know, uh, a good veteran, like a, a Donovan Solano type um, just to bridge the gap maybe. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Brandon Crawford's going to, going to be gone. And honestly, I, I don't know where he'll go. Um, I think he'll go wherever there's a need. He's, he, you need to pick one team. <laughs> <laughs> I do like your point about the angels. I think definitely a, mm -hmm. um, a California team. Like he's absolutely a California boy through and through. He's not going to take more money to go play for the Indians or, or whoever, whatever the Cleveland team will be called then. But, right. I know. mean, could, could we yeah. see him in the, in an A's uniform? The A's I won't, mean, the A's won't even spend enough money to bring him there. True. I don't think Crawford's a huge yeah. dollar guy, but he'll get five to 8 million bucks to go play. Yeah. I, I think there might be a little bit of a hometown discount maybe yeah alvis Sandra's but... contract is up <clears throat> yeah so replace one aging veteran with another aging veteran um i i think brooks is probably more spot on with the angels pick but i mean is it impossible that he goes to the dodgers uh, yeah i would say so yeah i'd say <laughs> definitely impossible because okay. gavin lux well, i, I I just wanted to stoke the flames a little bit. No, it's just impossible because he, you know, they'll just bring back Seager anyway. It'll just be pointless yeah. conversation or Lux, whatever. Yeah. He, ain't, yeah. he ain't gonna go to that. He <laughs> saw you saw how that went with Romo and Wilson. Yeah. It's not fun. So, yeah, I'd probably on. say Angels as well. Yeah. Yeah, like, watch, watch him just say, "I'm gonna take my talents to San Diego, play shortstop." <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, Tatis, you're out. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, turn on the TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tatis is out of here. Yeah, but I like what Taylor said about bridging the gap. Um, mm. I don't know what they – I don't know where they profile Lu, uh, Luciano. I don't – I don't know if they see him as a third baseman. I mean, it would either be short or third. I think it it's, depends if they sign a Trevor Story. Type, yeah, it does. Saying, yeah. It does. For sure it does. It does. Um, but this is going to be an interesting one. We mentioned Trevor Story. I see him going to Colorado. I mean, that's a little bit of an interesting fit. They're going through a weird phase right now. I think Colorado would have one, like there'd be one exception that like maybe he wouldn't go there. And it's if they decide to move Brendan Rogers to, to back to short. Cause I know he's played a lot of second base. He was their former number one overall pit our first yeah. round pick. He was up there yeah. though. Uh, top 10, I think, but I, I like the fit. I mean, he's, he's hit pretty good there. He's hit a lot there. He's familiar with the ballpark. People I just, like hitting there. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. No, but mm -hmm. um, I Crawford just makes a lot of sense in Colorado. I mean, it's not like they're in win now mode. He could kind of relax, maybe reestablish himself. He's never going to reestablish himself to, you know, 2015, 21 home run Brandon Crawford. But you know, maybe down the line, get a ton of one year deals to finish hey. out his career. Hey, if Pilar can hit 21 bombs, so can Crawford yeah. at Colorado. I'm just saying. Yeah. But yeah. 
I don't know if he likes the infield dirt in Colorado. <laughs> Mate, what about the Mariners? What's their shortstop suit? They have J.P. Crawford, right? J.P. Crawford, Ooh. yeah. Crawford and Crawford platoon. <laughs> Who, who's playing short tonight? Crawford. 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 I like it. <laughs> good, good one. That's funny. All right, let's is end it, it here. Is on there our, another player? I think, yeah, I think is there there's another, another guy. Gerald, is that his name? Gerald. Dent- oh, Gerald. Guys, this one, this one's going to be hard for um, – a lot of us, I don't want to say canceled, but that might be the result of our fate after this. But <laughs> Buster Posey, man, rookie of the year, MVP, um, gold glove. We don't have to go through them all. We know how great he is. The leader of this team for so many years. I'll start off here. No, actually, no, I don't want to start off because I have a banger here coming up very mm-hmm. soon. Um, Taylor, why don't you start us off here in terms of – because then, you know, since the position you're in, people can forget about what you said – because it will be fresh in their minds with what me and Brooks said. So we- I'm, I'm used to all the heat. So um, yeah. I, Farhan Zaidi and um, Scott Harris, who I always forget exists, um, <laughs> they were brought in to make the tough decisions, you know, to not dish out tons of money to these aging veterans who people love. I think Buster Posey is the one exception. I think we've talked about first base moving forward and with Brandon Belt, one million percent gone. I think Buster Posey re-signs as a first baseman because Joe, there, he's not going to be the team starting catcher because you got Joey Bart and Patrick Bailey. You're not going to create another log jam there. So I think Buster Posey re-signs as a first baseman in 2022. Interesting. Brooks? Hmm. Interesting. Um, Buster Posey, San Francisco Giant in 2022. I uh, I also agree with Taylor on that one. Uh, Did I steal your thunder? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I I would I would be. I don't know. I I didn't think you were gonna pick a team or anything. I, I figured you're you're uh, you're thinking how I'm thinking. And Posey is not some guy that you let another team pay a couple million more dollars to or whatever. You know, people could see him going to, uh, you know, another contending team as that veteran guy, whatever. You saw it like, like a Brian McCann type going to the Astros or whatever. He needs I, a send-off. <laughs> no, he's going to play until he's literally 90 years old. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. Buster Posey is literally – I'm only half agreeing with Taylor here. He's coming back to play a catcher, actually. Buster mm-hmm. Posey is a catcher first, hitter second at this part of his career. His defense is still elite. If he goes anywhere but the Giants, he is a catcher. So why would the Giants not view him that way? The guys that are looking at every stat and saying, hmm, Joey Bart is our catcher coming up. Kirk Casale is under contract. We got Chadwick Trump. But who is the best catcher out of all four of those guys right now? Buster Posey. Fresh legs, year and a half off. Taylor, I want to hear what you're about to say. Well, I, I want to ask you what the immediate future a catcher looks like for the Giants then with the, the Posey and then the two prospects. I mean, what, how does that play out for you? Consider Patrick Bailey, uh, you know, a couple of years out because, uh, you know, he hasn't played one professional baseball game. So I don't even want to hear his name right now. He's not Joey up. Bart, your first base. Yeah, we need time with, soon. with Bart. How does he share with Bart? Like what happens there? Okay. So, so you have a Joey Bart who uh, is not a Farhan pick who I don't, agree with trading him right now because I think that would be a complete what the hell uh, and you'd be trading him at his lowest possible value but I'm not against the idea that he might be traded at some point because he is a asset he is a mm-hmm. catcher Joey Bart should not play one freaking game at first base I think I'd rather have Wilmer Flores out there than Joey Bart Joey Bart is out there because he can hit the ball really far and he, he's in so his- we're told yeah, no, not in the majors, of course. <laughs> we didn't see any last yeah. year. You no, know, he's like a – I've said this a couple times. Uh, he's like a Mike Zanino type where he's strong defender and he can hit the ball further than anybody on the team. But, you know, he's going to have some batting average issues, always floating around 260, 270, 280 in the minors, 298 tops. That's – you know, that does not translate well to the majors. If you're not hitting 330 in the minors, you're not going to hit close to 300 in the majors, usually. Who knows? Late bloom stuff. I'm not going to go off on a bar tangent here. But all I'm saying is Buster Posey is not some guy that you just say goodbye to in this organization. And if he's playing anywhere near his uh, 20, you know, 
17, 2018 muster numbers uh, where you're getting strong catching, not a ton of power, but um, guys are starting to randomly hit more homers this, uh, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, so he could tap into some power after his hip is healthy. Who knows? That's all about this year, but 2022 and beyond, I still see Posey as catching and uh, sharing time with uh, Bart. And I think Casali is still under contract right next year. So I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. But well, let's go with that. Yeah, I, you can't have enough catching. And, yeah, Buster will play some first base, sure. But I definitely see Posey coming back, two-year deal at least, and don't think it's going to be cheap. The guy gave up his entire contract to stay home last year. He's going to get paid at least 10 or $12 bucks a year. Right now he's of, getting 22 I think one of us will be right. Yeah. I want to hear what Mr. Risotto has to say about this. Yeah, so I agree with everything you guys just said. I don't see him playing in any other uniform, which is why I see him retiring. (laughs) Oh! Going back to throwing diapers in Leesburg, Georgia. um, I I mean, here's here's my reasoning with that. And maybe I'm listening to our pal Mr. Ruderman a little bit too much on this. Mr. Ruderman, if you're watching this, Stephen, hello. can't have enough Stevens. <laughs> here's, here's the deal with that. Um, he takes a year off, and we don't know the effect. I mean, Ian Desmond enjoyed taking a year off so much that he's taking another year off. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know what the effect that has. I mean, you get into kind of a routine. <laughs> Sorry, after we trade Arenado, he took the year off. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not coming back to this. Sorry, sorry, keep going. Yeah, exactly. And if Story's gone, that's another reason why he doesn't have to come back. No, but, okay, yeah, exactly. but like, I mean, I don't know what that does to you mentally. I don't know if that, you know, because you get into a routine, you get used to, you know, being with the children. Um, I don't know if like he would get, you know, kind of eager to get back to that, you know, halfway through. You know, so I, I, I just don't know where his head stands. Do I, uh, do I think that he's excited to be out there now? Absolutely. I mean, he, he looks great. He, he obviously is happy. Otherwise, he would, you know, opt out again. So I think he wants, you know, to come back. I, I, I think the one thing that I would say is that I do hope that there's fans in the stands to, to wish him goodbye. Even if it's not 42,000 people, I still think that. Yeah. In 2025. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I, I'm sure it is. But and fuego, dude. I think on the surface it would be, but I, I think that's probably a really excellent um, piece of speculation. I, th- I think that after re- kind of retiring for a mm-hmm. year, um, mm-hmm. he got a taste of that life, and I think that you know if you're a player at the twilight of your career and it's almost over you know there's a lot of questions about how will retirement be you know will i be happy will i be content and he he has he kind of has those questions answered in a way Mm -hmm. um because he he sort of experienced it so i I think that steven's definitely on to something where he may um lust for the days of um staying at home yeah and i do uh i do think that Mm -hmm. he'll he'll he's not going away though i don't think he'll go away I think he'll, you know, in a perfect world, I could see the guy taking a job with Major League Baseball. I think he's perfect for, you know, some of the leadership they need. I mean, he's mm-hmm. going to – I mean, he's going to be the the head coach of Lee and Addy's baseball team. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be raising his new two twins. I mean, it's – he's – again, like Taylor mentioned, and you know, I said before, he got a taste of it. And mm-hmm. I don't know – we don't know if, you know, that's going to wear on him, if – you know, what am I doing at one point in the year? You know, the mm-hmm. Giants aren't doing too good. We don't know where his head's going to be at. So that's kind of why I mentioned retiring. But, you know, if, if, I were to met, if I were to pick a team, it would be the Giants. I just don't see him playing anywhere else. So that's yeah. where I would and, go. Uh, I'll simply add to your retirement take that, um, yeah, obviously anything is possible. Uh, I, I still see him as uh, it was a family, very strong family, um, you know, issue i don't want to say issue but you know having premature babies is you know it's it's intense it's yeah. like it's a lot of work it's stressful um and uh also it was kind of a bs season it, you saw how the negotiations were going um you know everything got 80 games 90 games 70 games 60 you know it was just like it, side of it, what's to come 
well, it just made sense for him to opt out of that. Other guys were, uh, David Price opted out. Ian Desmond opted out. And he said, his, probably, his wife said, come on. I just, we just had uh, these uh, twins adopted. Let's go. Uh, so he made that decision first year without Bochi, first year without Bumgarner. I'm sure it was just like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go take care of the family. So uh, just to settle in on my point here is yeah. he was opting out of kind of a weird alternate universe baseball season he is a baseball lifer i don't see that guy stop playing until he his body completely shuts down when he's like 40 or something or officially becoming a manager and just he loves his family but i bet you he's still doing baseball seven months a year eight months here yeah and before we wrap up here i want to do another point here on posey real quick mm-hmm. he's accomplished everything you could possibly mm-hmm. accomplish in baseball he has mm-hmm. every accolade you could possibly accomplish in baseball you know, I don't know what the Hall of Fame means to him. I don't know if it means anything to him, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, all I know is that this guy – and hear me out when I say because I've been critical of people that have been on the retirement – on the retired numbers train. Mm-hmm. Um, Are we going to have that debate? No, I'm just <laughs> going to go through going to happen right now? No, I'm just going to go through this real quick. But we've never seen a time in Giants history like the three championships, which is why I think they do things a little differently in terms of number retirement. And I think the only guy I would do it for is probably number 28. So I will leave yeah. it off there. I think Posey's kind of the only guy you could do it for. Uh, mm-hmm. for. I know Madison Bumgarner and Matt Cain and Hunter Pence, those guys were important, but number retirement is as good as it gets. And I think you, yeah. you give Buster Posey that honor. All right. This was a great show, guys. This was yeah, really fun. Was awesome. Brooks, Taylor, I appreciate you guys coming on. Brooks, great idea. He was the one that reached out to me. Taylor, I'm sorry we kept you a little later. I know you want to watch The Bachelorette. So I know. Like, uh, we're all bachelor, adults here, bachelor. but uh, Bachelor. And, you know, <laughs> Brooks, Brooks has adult response. He has, like, a, a wife and kids or whatever. I, 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 you know, I, I just got to go watch The Bachelor. Hey, yeah. the baby's in bed. The wife's happy. She's, she's getting a little break. It's nice. It's yeah. perfect. It was a perfect night. You guys – rocked it i was so happy to sit down chat baseball with my boys uh keep you know giants fans whoever's watching just keep consuming all giants content podcasts uh you know just keep watching uh what you know taylor's doing he's covering the team he's uh you know steven's always interviewing awesome uh guests and all that stuff and i'll just be running uh the at s of giants fans twitter account my own account as well uh just Stay long for the ride. Keep joining us. Yeah, a, for sure. For sure. Fun I, I always appreciate your guys' input. So it was a lot of fun tonight, guys. Um, if you want to follow the podcast, go ahead and do it on Twitter and Instagram at RizzoCast. Subscribe, like, follow, Rizzo-cast. Spotify, you know, um, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere you find your podcast, YouTube, of course. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Go baseball season. (laughs) Yes, we're back, baby. All right, guys, that was part two. Hopefully some surprises and hot takes there. Love to see it. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more content. Uh, Follow on RizzoCast at Steven. No, that's my at. What am I talking about? Follow on RizzoCast at RizzoCast on Twitter and Instagram. I guess you could follow me on Twitter at Steven Risotto as well. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And enjoy the rest of your day.